It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas for the mutant fam. There's a Santa that's going to hell. It's garbage day as well. As for Midnight Marathon, who knows? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas filled with lots of screams. Friday Night Frights is why we're here. It's Christmas in July this year. It's a heat miser with dream. It's Christmas in July. It's Friday Night Frights, Christmas in July. And this is Mutant Cafe, and we are about to make Italian bread pizzas from scratch two different ways. Roll that music! Daddy Man. Hey there, Kitchen Mutants. It is Friday night. I am your favorite Daddy Man in the kitchen, and that can only mean one thing. That's right, it is time once again for Mutant Cafe. Welcome, welcome back to the kitchen. And it is an exciting night here in the Mutant Cafe kitchen because as part of Friday Night Frights, Christmas in July, we are making a delicious Italian bread pizza two different ways, not one, but two. We are making a traditional um, French bread pizza, but we're using Italian bread. I never understood why they use French bread for pizza. So we're using Italian bread, and we're making a traditional with pepperoni and green peppers. And then we are also making a caprese of Italian bread pizza that I think just might have you switch the way you look at pizza. So. As we always do, we got so much to do tonight, so let's get going. It's also kind of hot in here. Daddy Man is wearing a sweater in the middle of July, and that's what I do for y'all for Christmas, okay? So let's hit those ingredients first and foremost. All right, and I can barely read them. All right, 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Now, we have talked about this before. You always want to use the best ingredients you can possibly find. This is super important. We are gonna make a really quick pasta sauce, and because we're making it so quick and those flavors are not gonna have a ton of time to meld together, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that each individual ingredient you put in the sauce is delicious. So I am highly suggesting you go to the ethnic food aisle, not the Italian aisle where you normally get your pasta and your jars of pre-done pasta sauce. Go in that ethnic aisle. There's probably a little tiny Italian section. Look for the tomatoes that come from Italy. It'll say right on the can that they're canned from Italy. It might even have a date on it. And if it has a date on it, that is even better. Go for obviously the closest date that you can find to today. So that's 28 ounce can of crushed real Italian tomatoes. If you can't find them, hey, no big deal. It's better to have something than not anything and not do it at all. All right, so one quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil plus a little bit more for the bread, okay? Now, you're also going to need seven whole garlic cloves. We're going to dice those up or dice them very thinly um, for the sauce. You're also going to need one green bell pepper. You're going to need about um, 
four ounces of pepperoni. You're gonna need about a cup, cup and a quarter of shaved Parmesan cheese, if you can find it. If not, go ahead and get the ground or grated Parmesan cheese, not a problem. You are also going to need 16 ounces, and man, do I have problems saying this. These are Chichetne, I think I'm probably saying that wrong. Sorry, hubs. These are the tiny little homemade mozzarella balls. And again, I can't say them right. You can tell they're fresh, they pull apart. They're so delicious. So don't get the big ball. You can get the big ball if that's all you can find and just kind of dice it up. But these little tiny balls, they melt so great in the oven and they are mm, delicious. You know how I love to eat. Um, you're gonna need about a dozen, dozen and a half cherry tomatoes. You're gonna obviously need one big fresh. Try to get soft, you want it to be soft, not too hard and crunchy, because it's kind of hard to bite into. Nice, soft, fresh Italian loaf bread. You're gonna need about four tablespoons of butter. Make sure it's nice and soft so it's easy to spread. Salt and pepper, and then basil. I don't know if I said the basil. Oh, and crushed red pepper flakes for just a nice, tiny little zing. And then yeah, one big, fresh bunch of basil. If you can't get a fresh bunch of basil, go ahead and just get some Italian herbs. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll taste pretty close. Let's get that pan going now, nice and heated up on medium. You're also gonna want your oven at 450. I know it's July, but this goes really quick. So you only have to be hot for like about a half an hour, 40 minutes, and at least you're not wearing a crazy Christmas sweater, right? It's just part of all the decorations. Not a lot of decorations, but I tried to make it a little Christmassy. A little present over there that we'll open later. Oh, being a present, we're opening presents all night long on Friday Night Frights. I'm so excited. All right, I feel like a little kid. Can you tell? So we're going to go quarter cup of this olive oil right in that pan. All right. That kind of went up there. Let's just get some of this stuff out of the way so you can see what I'm doing over here. And we're going to dice up the um, garlic. We're gonna cut it one. Here we go. My knife. So we're just gonna go super thin slices, as thin as you can go, okay? We're doing that mafioso thing. Which movie was that, Goodfellas maybe? Where they're in jail and he's taking that razor blade and he's cutting that garlic as paper thin as he possibly can. It's exactly what you wanna do with these seven garlic cloves, as thin as you can possibly get them. Because what's gonna happen is as soon as they hit that olive oil, they're almost gonna kind of melt. The garlic is lovely. This will help it go super, super fast in that pan. All right, nice and thin, as thin as you can. Don't worry about it, if they're a little thicker, it'll just take another minute in the pan to get them nice and cooked up. Not a big deal. This is good practice. Go as thin as you possibly can. Just sit there and get a couple garlic cloves and just sit here and practice one day. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Do you want to sit here and practice your garlic skills with a big giant uh, head of garlic? Let me know. I got an amazing recipe for a two head of garlic chicken, believe it or not. It's roasted, done in summer. Maybe not the best recipe, but um, it's so good. And you need literally two heads of garlic diced up just like this. Super thin, take your time. Whoa, hey, let me get that off. Hey, like Pee Wee Herman, that's the magic word. The magic word is smoke alarm. <laughs> All right, nice and thin. Every time Daddy Man says the magic word, get out the fire extinguisher. <laughs> All right, keep going nice and thin. Man, that's the first time that has happened. We're at like close to 50 episodes and I don't think I've heard the fire alarm go off yet. Fire alarm is going off because Daddy Man is hot. Have I mentioned it's like 92 degrees that I'm wearing a sweater? Probably gonna measure it eight or nine more times. All right, one more clove of garlic. If you're cooking with me again and you're not keeping up, do not worry. This recipe is very flexible. You'll have plenty of time at the end to catch back up. 
All right, there is all seven of those garlic cloves, and we're gonna go right into that hot oil. You should be smelling that oil already, and I definitely am. Love that extra virgin olive oil smell. It smells so good. And what we're doing is we're making a super quick marinara. And I know there are a lot of marinara sauces out there where they cook them to death or it's got all kinds of ingredients. You don't need to do this or that. <laughs> Once you do this quick marinara recipe, man, it is so summery and so delicious. And because you're using those awesome Italian tomatoes or whatever tomatoes you have, it's just every flavor comes shooting out of this because there's so few ingredients. It just, it really tastes like Italian summer to me. Delicious. All right, so we're just giving these a minute. Don't let them brown up. There's nothing worse than burnt garlic. Man, you could tell burnt garlic, and you cannot save a recipe once that garlic starts burning. You gotta dump it out and start all over again. It's kind of like burnt popcorn. One little tiny kernel of burnt popcorn ruins that whole entire batch. Same thing with the garlic. All right, here it's sizzling. It's cooking up. Break it up in case you didn't cut through all the way. There we go. Okay, we're almost there. How quick and easy that is. This is quick and easy sauce. This is good for like penne. You cook this on the stove top, let it cool down, get some penne cooked up, throw it in there, let it completely cool down, have it just cold for a nice, delicious little summer kind of pasta. Yum, yum, yum. Now, all you are gonna do now, get that garlic off the edge of my, we're gonna stick however many pinches of this crushed red pepper flake you want. I'm going, that's a medium sized pinch. I don't think I'm gonna go a lot more, maybe just a touch more. I like it super spicy, hubs not so much. Let's get a little bit of pepper in that pan. A little bit of salt in that pan. Okay. And then we're just gonna take those crushed tomatoes and go right in the pan very carefully. See how I poured it on that spoon to kind of to get it off that heat so it doesn't splatter. There you go, get it stirred up. And we're gonna add in about a half a can of water. You could use white wine if you wanted. I'm going water. Keep it nice and simple. Get all that tomato goodness off the sides of that can, right into the pan. Okay. Get it all stirred in. Oh, so silky with that olive oil. Delicious. All right. And now all we're gonna do is leave that on medium heat. We're gonna take a couple basil slices and lay them right on top. Give them a little squeeze. Start getting some of those oils out of there, especially in the stems. I took most of the big stems off of that basil, by the way. There you go, just a couple of those. Oh, basil smells so good, kind of like a licorice. Yum. All right, that's it. That's your sauce. It's gonna cook for about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15. Let's get to the bread. Get these sleeves up. Ooh. <laughs> Me contest to see if Daddy makes it without passing out. All right, so all you're gonna do here, we're gonna get a couple of these things out of the way. So you're just gonna start at the one end and just kind of eyeball it about halfway, okay, all the way through. And by the way, we're using the serrated knife. We've talked about that one. It's the one with the brrr down the side. All right, it's good for bread. Great for tomatoes. Cut this about halfway through. All right, there you go. Now you got your two halves, put them there. Eh, that's pretty close. <laughs> You'd prefer it to be pretty even. That's close enough. You get them a little uneven like that, I tell you what, the Caprese one, you're gonna want a little crispier anyhow, so that thinner piece is gonna be perfect for the Caprese Italian bread pizza, and then we'll use the other one for the traditional green pepper and pepperoni. It'll hold up a little better. All right, 
Now, here's tip number one. If we haven't already had a bunch of tips. Put the cut side down and press it flat. All right, what that does is it makes it a little less thick because that's really hard. How many times have you bit into a French bread pizza and it's so big and thick that you can barely take a bite of it and you got pizza sauce down your beautiful Christmas sweater? Who wants that? So see how I kind of flatten that out? All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. With this one, maybe not as much because this is the thinner one. There we go, all right? So we got it all nice and flattened out. And I keep getting rid of crumbs everywhere. Get those crumbs cleaned back up. Easy Christmas decorations. All right, get a nice big baking sheet. This is tip number two. Don't put your sauce right on this raw bread. All that's gonna happen is it's gonna suck that sauce up and it's gonna make everything super goopy and gooey, all right? So this is kind of the toast theory here. When you put toast, or you know, you put jelly on toast, it kind of stays on the top. You put jelly on bread when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it gets kind of mushy. Any kid can tell you that. I always toast my bread when I make peanut butter and jelly, by the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slather this with some butter. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Right. You may not use this full four tablespoons. You may use a little more. Depends on how much butter you want on there. Right. Make sure you get those edges. Always get the edges. Right. And then we're just gonna do, let's get a little more in there. Probably gonna use pretty close. It's a big loaf. If your loaf is a little smaller than this, go ahead and go two. This is gonna make enough sauce. Definitely, you could do two of these. Even this size, you would have enough sauce for two. All right. And again, if you don't like the ingredients I'm using, we've talked about this in past episodes. Use what you like. I'm using these particular ingredients because pepperoni and green pepper is a pretty standard. French bread pizza, we're making Italian bread. Um, so, you know, and they just happen to be nice and Christmassy. So, you know, it worked. And then this caprese salad, um, or yeah, caprese pizza, also again, very Christmassy. So I thought, eh, why not? Okay, little bit of pepper again, just a tiny little bit here. Again, just adding some layers of flavor, just a touch of salt. I use non-salted butter. We've talked about that before. That way you can control the salt. And then just a touch of your parm. Okay, that's gonna create another barrier. All right. And we are gonna go into a 450 oven for just a couple minutes to toast this bread up. Don't go heavy with this cheese because you're defeating the purpose if you go too heavy. It's not gonna crisp up, okay? Get this in the oven for just a couple minutes. Hello, pretty sweater. Hi. Okay, give the sauce a stir. You don't really need to mess around with the sauce too much. It's basically just cooking down a little bit. Mmm, that olive oil smells so good in there. And those tomatoes, man, you can tell the difference between the American canned tomatoes and the Italian tomatoes. Come on, Italy knows what they're doing with tomatoes. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut our pepper. My pepperoni is already pre-cut. If yours is not, start slicing that up as well. This is pretty easy. Look at a clock here so I don't lose track of the toasting. You've seen me do this before. You hold it up, hold it nice and steady, cut down the one side right where that stem core is, cut down the next side where the stem core is, and then put it flat and get those other two quadrants. Throw your seeds away. And then if you got any seeds here, just knock them out. All right. Two, three, and four. And then let's just get the seeds off the board. All right. Super, super thin on this because your pizza is only going in 
for eight to 10 minutes. So you wanna make sure this gets cooked down a little bit. So go as thin as you possibly can. That is the theme of the show today. Cutting thin, practicing our knife skills. All right, if you get a bunch of white, you know that little pith in there, go ahead and cut that out. Nice, thin green pepper slices, okay? Not paper thin, because then you can't really taste the pepper, but pretty thin. I don't know if you could tell how thin that is. Kind of, maybe not. There we go. All right, just keep cutting that pepper. This is with my normal knife. Okay, cutting that whole pepper up. You may not use the whole pepper. Again, this is gonna be enough for maybe two French bread pizzas, or you can really load it up. I don't like my pizza super loaded up. Sometimes you get a pizza, especially here in Chicago, the Chicago deep dish pizza. It's so loaded full of stuff that it's just overwhelming. Your mouth is like, I can't taste any one particular thing. I'm tasting 40 different things at once. My mouth gets so confused. Surprising. <laughs> Daddy man's always confused. I will cut my bow. All right, let's give us another stir. Now, sometimes you get the Italian tomatoes and they already have a couple basil sprigs in there, which is awesome. In that case, you don't really need to add some more basil unless you want. And again, if you don't have the basil, the fresh basil, you can't find it, grow it, by the way. Basil is so easy to grow. It goes crazy in a pot. Just keep it watered. Um, but go ahead and use some dried Italian herbs, some dried basil, some dried thyme, whatever you want. All right, we're gonna switch knives. Back to the serrated for these cherry tomatoes. We've talked about that before. I'm gonna go lengthwise with these tomatoes so they lay a little more flat on the pizza. Okay, just in half. No big thing. All right, let's check our bread, shall we? Just to make sure, I don't wanna burn it. Nope, another minute. Let's keep cutting these tomatoes. It's about a dozen and a half cherry tomatoes, medium size. If you get some bigger ones like this, you can cut them in quarters if you want, or thirds. Squirting everywhere, yummy. Caprese salad is one of my favorite summer salads. It's just the mozzarella, the basil, and you get the big, fresh, a lot of time like farm stand or heirloom tomatoes, all the different colored tomatoes, beautiful. You drizzle some olive oil on it, rip up that basil, salt and pepper, maybe a little parm. If they wanna get fancy, oh, it's so good, and they give you little, bread pieces and you can kind of grab the pieces and eat it up, it's so good. Or sometimes you get it on lettuce, a lot of different ways you can do caprese. I've seen caprese salad with big chunks of tomatoes where they basically take a big old tomato and just cut it in quarters and you know, that's good. And big uh, mozzarella balls like that, deconstructed almost. <laughs> I have seen a deconstructed but let's not talk about that. That's just this chef like putting four things in a bowl and going, here, you make your own food. That's not what I'm paying you for. Anyhow, <laughs> let's give this one more good stir. So we got our ingredients prepped. We have our thinly sliced pepperoni. I like it really thin. Go thick if you like it thick. We've got all of our sliced up and, um, excuse me, uh, Parmesan cheese. We've got our little mozzarella balls. I'm not gonna try to say how, what that's called again. They're just little tiny mozzarella balls. We've got a little more olive oil and we've got our basil. We've cut up our green pepper and we've cut up our cherry tomatoes. We have this out of the way. Just rearrange, I feel like I'm always rearranging. All right, so I'm gonna get a towel down so we can get our French bread, excuse me, our Italian bread. See, it's like ingrained in my life. All we hear is French bread pizza, French bread pizza. It doesn't make any sense. Italian bread pizza, especially when you're crushing it like I just did for you. That's the big difference between French and Italian. It's just thicker, in my opinion. It's maybe made a little different. Bread is bread. Right, we're gonna get that off, because I think it's just about done. Let's grab our bread. Oh yeah, there we go. So we want crispy edges already. Perfect. 
Look at that. Mm. Let's get that down on the board. All right, I'm gonna flip them around here. Get this open. I'm gonna burn my cooking surface. All right, so got our two lovely bread here. Now I said we were gonna go caprese first, so we will do this one that's in front so you can see it. Now for the caprese, I am gonna use sauce, but I'm only gonna use a tiny little bit of sauce. You could use some pesto here if you'd like. Um, that would be delicious, some basil pesto. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of the liquid. I really want the tomato chunks, not the liquid, okay? And we're just gonna lightly that spread out there. Again, just the chunks, and I'm not even covering the whole bread. Just a little taste of the tomato sauce with this caprese, because you got those fresh tomatoes you're putting on there. So why go too much, right? All right, just a little bit more, covering mostly the center, not much on the edges, definitely not thick, little pieces of garlic, yummy, yummy. All right, now just decorate as you see fit. I'm gonna make this gonna kind of look like a Christmas tree. See where I'm going with this? With all these nice little red ornaments and nice little white ornaments. And on the other pizza, the red and green. All right, so let's get the tomatoes on there. Yummy, yummy. I'm gonna load it up with those little tomatoes. And then we're gonna take these mozzarella balls and we're just gonna tear them in half and we're gonna place those all over the pizza. half or thirds, it's gonna melt. Now the nice thing about this mozzarella also is it's not gonna melt entirely. Mozzarella is not a great melting cheese. It doesn't get all ooey gooey like some of the other cheeses. But the one thing it does do is it has this delicious, uh, inherent, stretchy, kind of milky flavor. It's so good. I don't know if you've ever seen mozzarella balls being made, but it's such a cool process. It's a, there's a definitely an art to it. It's fun to watch. All right, so I got loaded up with all that delicious, fresh mozzarella. Yes, you can use shredded mozzarella. Shredded mozzarella is a lot different than this, but feel free if that's what you can find. Use what you can find and be happy with what you have. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take these basil leaves and we're just going to rip them apart. Again, this is a very rip friendly dish and just get that green basil on there and see how red and green and white and pretty it is it's like a little christmas tree yay because <laughs> it's christmas in july with friday night frights and with killer saturday we'll talk about that in a minute it's a full christmas weekend y'all Get some basil on there. Again, it's how much you want, how little you want. And then just a tiny little bit of parm, just for some flavor, a little bit of melting action. All right, ta-da. That one's done. See how easy that was? Done, done, done. We're gonna get that in the oven in a minute. Scoot this one back so you can see. See how delicious and melted and toasted that got? Yum. Now on this one, you definitely want the sauce because this is the traditional, probably what you had as a kid. Because again, don't forget, this is Friday night TV dinners redone. We're just redoing that French bread pizza that you used to take out of a box. Why bother? Come on. This is going to take you about 35 minutes total. Who wants that when you can do this? And it's so inexpensive, it's so delicious, it feeds a crowd, as you can see. I'm only using half the ingredients here, so it definitely, if you got two loaves of bread, all the better. And again, you can kind of see, I'm trying to pull out a lot of the sauce here. <laughs> I don't know where that buzzer came from. It's another buzzer. <laughs> we said the magic word. I don't know what's going <laughs> It is the night of bells. Everybody knows it's Christmas time. 
the bells are caroling. I don't know, whatever. Anyhow, let's keep going with this sauce. And again, you're trying to get those nice chunks, not all the wet, because you don't want to make this soggy. All right, and I went pretty heavy with the sauce on this one. And then now we're going to take those beautiful green peppers, and I'm going to make little rows of green peppers. Fa la 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 la, we're making a tree. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, nice little rows there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my pepperoni in half. Just cuz I think it'll look a little prettier. Not necessary, obviously. You could take the pepperoni off this and keep them both vegan. Vegan? Not sure. I always get confused. Is cheese vegan? Vegetarian? Not sure. But there are, I know, cheeses that you can get that are, um, I think, not made of milk. I don't know. I'm very bad, I've told you before, with the vegan, the vegetarian. I'm trying. Y'all saw we're eating a lot of the satan, and we got some jackfruit that I'm going to try to um, do a little grill with. Whoops. Lost my pepperoni. All right, let's get that pepperoni on there. This is the nice thing too, you can put as much or as little as you want. Sometimes you get those French bread pizzas and you're like, yo, where's my toppings? There's nothing here. That's because you're buying it out of the box. And again, there's nothing wrong with the box when you're in a hurry or whatever, but it's Friday night fright, y'all. You want something good in your stomach for all the fun you're about to have. All right, I'm loading this one up as you can tell. All right, so that's good. Now, we're gonna go with the parm. You could go mozzarella on this if you wanted. Really, again, this is kind of do what you like. Black olives if you like them, green olives, sausage. I mean, there's so much you could put on a pizza. Y'all know what you can put on a pizza. Put what you like. Go ham and uh, Pineapple, if you want to go that route, have a little Hawaiian, aloha, Christmas, nothing wrong with that. All right, there's that one. See how easy that was? So easy. You just made two French bread pizzas. Now you got to just throw it in the oven. We're almost done. I'm going to grab it with both hands because it's heavy. I'm going to show you when I get up close how they look before we put them in. That's what they're looking like now. We will see you in about eight minutes. Eight to ten minutes, 450 degrees. Middle rack. All right. While I do some cleanup, let's talk about Friday Night Frights. It is Friday Night Frights, Christmas in July. And if we haven't already, because at the time of this taping, we're still discussing how we're going to do this, it's all a big surprise. I didn't announce what this meal was until we started. And we have two movies coming up, one at 8 o'clock, one at 10 o'clock, and you're definitely not going to want to miss either of those movies. Trust me, Chris over there at Mutant Theater has picked out some amazing movies, and he will tell you what they are uh, a little bit beforehand, I believe, um, just so you have enough time to get it queued up and press play. And again, that's Christmas movie number one at 8 o'clock, Christmas movie number two at 10 o'clock, and then at... Um, Midnight-ish. Let's put it that way, because I don't want to give away the surprise if it hasn't been told to you already. Midnight-ish, we are going to jump over to the Midnight Marathon with Frank over at MutantFam.com. He is doing such great things over there. Last week we watched, I actually stayed up almost the entire time, a half an hour shy of the entire time. Three amazing movies last weekend, and this Friday, he's got a big surprise for you set up. And speaking of surprises, whoo, Daddy Man has a package to open. Not a surprise to me. I know what's in this package. Let's get some stuff out of the way. But it's going to be a surprise for y'all, unless you happen to see the post that I posted a couple weeks ago. I was so excited I posted it. But now, we're going to go and in the Mutant Cafe kitchen. Let's open it up. Yeah, just what I always wanted. It's my very own Russell Todd. 
<laughs> you know Russell Todd from Friday the 13th part two, the cheese bag that gets hung upside down on the Jason trap and gets his throat slashed. You also know him from Chopping Mall. Russell Todd is one of my absolute favorite hunks of horror. And I happened to do a post about him. I think we were watching uh, Chopping Mall for one of the hundred times we've watched it in the past couple months. And he saw the post and he thanked me very, very much for everything I had to say about how much I loved him. And while we were talking, we were talking about Mutant Cafe. He went over, checked out an episode or two, absolutely loved it. And who knew that Russell Todd is also not only gorgeous to look at and a great actor, but he's also really good in the kitchen. And he gave me his recipe for Portuguese flan. So we might have to make that um, sometime soon. So he sent this picture. It says, hey, Brian, great chatting with you. All my love, Russell Todd. So this is the first piece of tchotchke, second piece of tchotchke, excuse me, I have up here, you can't see it? Yeah, you can see it. The Daddy Man Cafe that was made by my best friend, Courtney, who's also been a co-host on the show a couple of times. This is the second piece of swag that we got to hang up in the Mutant Cafe. Thank you so much, Russell Todd. You are amazing. I love it. I love it. I love you. Thank you so much. So we're gonna hang this. Maybe right here for now. I don't know where it's gonna go permanently. Let's put it right here. We will get it in a permanent spot. Ta-da! Now I got rust. Oh, you can't see it there. All right, let's put, we'll put it like here. I don't know where we'll put it. For now, we'll put it here. There's our Russell Todd. Let me get this plate down. How funny is that? You never know what's gonna happen on the Twitter, y'all. Russell Todd! <laughs> I'm gonna move him over so he's paying attention while we finish up these pizzas. Yay! <laughs> that was a, you never know what's gonna happen on Twitter, y'all, or who you're gonna meet. He's such a nice guy. We had a great conversation about a little bit of food, and so he is on Twitter. He's not a Russell Todd account, though. He's an account for his business, and he asked that I not share it, but he's out there, and he knows and sees that y'all are loving him when we're watching his movies. Let's check the pizza. Shall we? Isn't that fun? It's Christmas! Woo! -hoo. Let's get um, this stuff. Get my cutting board a little cleared up here. Now let's get that pizza out. Alright, we got just another minute or two. So, in addition to, we got this show. We also then have the two mutant theater movies coming up, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 12 o'clock Eastern Time-ish. We got the Midnight Marathon, and that is all Christmas Eve, because it is 7-24, so it's Christmas Eve in July. Tomorrow, on actual Christmas Day in July, 7-25, we are partnering up with Killer Horror Critic, which um, does Killer Saturdays. They are as part of Foolai because as if we didn't have enough going on in July, we've also named it Foolai where we are celebrating everything The Last Drive-In. One movie a day we're all watching together or by ourselves and we're all talking about hashtag F-U-L-Y Foolai. Um, they are going to be playing the original Phantasm from A Very Joe Bob Christmas, last year's Christmas special, not just this past one, the one from a whole year back when he surprised us and for some reason our Christmas special did all for four of the five Phantasm movies. So he's doing the original Phantasm and that is at nine o'clock Eastern time on Christmas day tomorrow. So after you open up all those presents and you have some eggnog and you do a little brunch or whatever, then pour some cocktails because the Monster Movie Happy Hour, I'm sure, gave us an amazing holiday cocktail for you to enjoy and get ready and cue up that Joe Bob, the last drive-in, Joe Bob and Darcy, Phantasm One. All right, let's get those pizzas. I can smell them and they smell amazing. I want them now. I'm so hungry, look at that. Pretty, pretty, yum. Check that out, check that out. French bread pizza. 
that did not come out of a box, that's for sure. Look how beautiful that is. We're down to the easiest part, and that is just cutting it up. Serrated knife, once again, nice big piece. I love those ends, you hear that crunch. Mm. Ooh, hot. <laughs> I say the easiest part, and then it's impossible to cut. <laughs> Let's get this other knife. We're gonna hold it. There we go. Cut right down into that bread. Mm. Okay, there is your caprese. Here's your pepperoni and green peppers. Pretty traditional French bread pizza. Oh, they both look delicious. Get this on a yummy looking Christmas plate. Let's get those two pieces right there. That is French bread pizza done two ways. A very traditional pepperoni and green pepper and then a very non-traditional basil caprese. We'll put a little bit of basil on top of that one just so you can kind of see that pretty green basil. There you go. Those are your two French bread pizzas. Get this out of the way. All right. How easy was that? 40 minutes I'm seeing on the clock and you made French bread pizza. That is way better than the stuff you get out of the box. Happy, happy Christmas mutant fam. And I hope you enjoy this pizza, Kitchen Mutants, and I will see you again next week. We got something great. It is still Friday night TV dinners. I am sweating my ass off, so I am going to sign off and say thank you one more time. Enjoy the movies and enjoy the entire rest of the Christmas in July. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me.